The Laureus Challenge 2022. An arduous 100 kilometer trek, seeing 100 intrepid explorers hike across the desert sand dunes and rugged wadis of the United Arab Emirates. The goal? To raise money for Laureus Sport for Good. Stepping up to the challenge was a team of sporting legends and Laureus Academy members. Australian cricket icon Steve Waugh, British Olympic cycling champion Chris Hoy, and South African rugby superstar Brian Habana. Leading the expedition was international adventurer and Laureus ambassador Annabelle Bond. Ahead of the trek, the Laureus icons converged in Dubai to share their thoughts on the challenge ahead. So there are a lot of nerves. I don't think I've properly walked in my shoes yet. It's going to be about eight or nine hours a day and a lot of heat and the sand and it's a life challenge, a life experience and it's going to be tough. I think it's, it's going to be as much of a mental challenge as a physical one. I don't think they quite realise what they've taken on. Everyone's had to deal with um, sort of pain in their in sporting careers and um, adversity so it's just, you know, just one step in front of another. Sponsoring the challenge in 2022 was Sierra Space, a leading commercial space travel company with legendary astronaut Steve Lindsay joining the expedition. What's great about it is we have a great group of people. One of the things I've learned in, in all of my experiences is that once you bond and get close as a team, then you help each other through the challenges. You form relationships that last for a lifetime. Despite its gruelling nature, the aim of the challenge was to raise funds for Laureus Sport for Good, which is using sport to improve the lives of disadvantaged children worldwide. It is amazing being a part of a fantastic organisation that in the last 22 years has impacted more than 6.5 million kids' lives. 250 projects in 50 countries, giving kids opportunities really to be the best they can be through sport and education. Being a big believer in what Laureus does, our goals and objectives were common and when we had the opportunity to sponsor this, we jumped on it. With the Laureus stars ready for their challenge of a lifetime, the moment had arrived to join their fellow fundraisers for their first taste of the desert. There was a mixture of nerves, apprehension and excitement in the camp ahead of the epic adventure. You know, you're coming into the unknown. I think a lot of people will feel much better once they experience the first day. I think then you, you're going to gauge how people are handling the, the heat, the sand. It's that fear of anticipation. Morning everyone, so that was our wake up song here at Laureus Challenge 2022. 5 a.m. Um, ready to go? <laughs> Setting out on day one, the team faced 25 kilometers of the barren Dubai desert. I'm so ready. Bring it on. So this is day one, it's flat, it's proper desert, no shade. It's gonna be a scorcher. This is apparently the hottest day of the trek. Among those taking on the challenge was music icon and Lincoln Park star Dave Farrell. We're 1.6 miles in, but uh, so far so good. With five NASA space missions to his name, legendary astronaut Steve Lindsay is used to extreme adventures. Every crew that goes up station and shuttles, and we'll take the crews and we'll put them in like a 12-day backpacking trek or something like that. Similar to this, just to teach them self-care, self-management, how to work as a team, and how to get through something reasonably difficult. There are a lot of parallels between this and what we do. So, stop number two, just under 10 kilometers, um, and we managed to find one tree, just the one. As temperatures soared to 38 degrees, the grueling nature of the challenge began to set in. We've had a couple of um, people drop out and jump in the car. It's a challenge. The conditions, I think, are the, the toughest part of this, the, the temperature. A few blisters I can see, everyone emptying out the sand in their shoes. Awful. There, yeah, I think mine are first to crack, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, blood blister. Uh, I think it's just generally the heat, you know, and you've got to keep hydrated, you keep drinking, and then you still feel thirsty, so you've just got to be really careful and mindful that uh, you've got to look after yourself. But um, I think the soft sand's coming, so it's going to be a bit of a real challenge happens. Rugby legend Brian Habana had an innovative solution to keep the blisters at bay. So I left my sand gaiters uh, back in my bag at the previous camp and after having to disperse about three kilograms of sand um, before checkpoint two, I thought I might as well innovate and adapt and survive as Bear Grylls would say. So yeah, uh, I'm probably starting a fashion trend because I see there's quite a few others that tried but there wasn't much left of the, the duct tape <laughs> after I'd been done with it. 
After an exhausting 10 hours of trekking, the tired team arrived at camp and settled down for a well-earned rest around the campfire. With a 4am wake-up call and 22 kilometres of trekking ahead, the Laureus stars and fundraisers stocked up on supplies to keep them fueled and energised for the day. Transferring to the mountain town of Hatta, day two pitted the fundraisers against the rough terrain and rugged hills of the Dubai Wadis. So yesterday was in a barren desert, tundra, it was hot, but today, look at it, it's beautiful. Yes, it's desolate, but we've still got some features, we've got great people. Day two so far has been incredible. We've been ascending a bit and having some terrain changes. In order to have like a whole understanding of the terrain, you have to do it all, right? So we're doing it all. <laughs> Yeehaw! Nice little tricky technical ascent. Um, definitely working the calves a little bit more than the flats that we had yesterday. But it's lovely. We're a good cause. That's how we do it. Brian is an amazing leader today. I found him to be funny, entertaining, inspirational. His sense of humor has been keeping us going. His concern for everybody. It's just great leadership here, all around. Woo! Oh, my tennis ball. Wilson! Fresh from winning the latest series of hit TV show, SAS Who Dares Wins, TV personality Callum Best was relishing his latest adventure into the wilderness. I think we're 10K into day two. This terrain today, I'm loving. It's my kind of terrain. Yesterday was a struggle, but everybody got it done. I love a challenge. You know, if, I think in life, if you can challenge yourself while trying to provide a service for others, it's one of the biggest and best things you can do. And that's what this is all about. But for Callum, the biggest challenge wasn't necessarily the trekking. Listen, we've got a, a many more, many more Ks and hours ahead of us. The only struggle I'm having is sleep. My roommate, David, snores so loud and he goes to bed before me, so I'm trying to sleep and he's just snoring away. I think I had three hours sleep last night. He's sick, he's very twisted, man. <laughs> I don't snore, I'm an angel. With spirits high, the fundraisers powered through the final kilometers of day two. Bringing some fresh energy on day three was Laureus Academy member and first African and Muslim female Olympic gold medalist, Nawal El Mutawakel. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I know it will be difficult. It will be very hot, very challenging, but we're all ready for it to support our Laureus uh, programs. One, two, three, bravo! The third day was set to be one of the most challenging with 31 kilometers of trekking ahead. Starting at Wadi Al Halo, the Sweet Valley, the team would trek to Wadi Al Fayyad in the Emirate of Fujaira. With the greatest distance of the challenge ahead, the fundraisers set off at a remarkable pace. Pace is good. Better, yeah, quicker, quicker the better. You get a bit of a rhythm, so when you stop, it's hard to get going again. So keen to keep moving. I felt that in my every joint in my body when I sat down. But we have powered through 20k. But with the rough terrain underfoot, inevitably there would be some accidents. Look, I fell down. I was not paying attention. So that's what you get when you don't pay attention. You need to be focused. You've got to watch where you're walking and there's a few rocks that are, can catch you if you're not paying attention. Yeah, I mean, everyone's sort of dealing with pain in their feet and you know, we saw someone with a broken finger. It's a great cause and it's worth, you know, pain in your feet. I mean, what's the worst it can be? After an arduous 31 kilometers in the scorching heat, arriving at the camp was an elating experience for the fatigued fundraisers. I'm happy to be here, basically. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what else to say. Happy to be here. Great team. Everybody's working hard and having fun and making sure everybody came along. And so it was great. Four thirty a.m. and with the sun still rising, the weary group took to the hills of Wadi Shorka for the final day. Felt great, felt more enthusiastic today. Day two and three were a bit rough. 
but invigorated and excited for today. The whole team's right, excited. Let's, let's We're ready to go get this thing done. I feel like actually amazing. <laughs> Have you seen this view? Where else would you rather be? Back around's amazing. Spectacular. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> Worth getting up at 4.30 a.m. for, and I don't say that lightly. With 20 kilometers of the challenge remaining, the team continued across the sand dunes in the sweltering heat of the desert. First snack break of the day. Really beautiful scenery today in the sand dunes. We're so close to the finish now. What is it, 20? How far we got to go? 12K? 16 more. 16K, almost there. Trudging through the thick sand and with the sun beating down, the harsh conditions began to take their toll. The heat is at, it's just impossible. Too hot. It's about 34 degrees, so yeah, it's feeling quite hot. So the main concern is overheating, um, so we're trying our best to make sure they're keeping nice and cool, a lot of water, hydration, um, and taking rest breaks in the shade. Probably one of the hardest days we've ever had, not feeling that great. Everyone's going to get there, that's amazing, so we're digging deep, enjoying it, but it's been a real challenge. The heat is out of control, hot. I think we all feel the end is near, but I can tell you I've got the entire Sahara in my shoes. Definitely excited for the finish line. I'm not used to getting blisters ever. Yeah, this, this heel is uh, not very happy. As the finish line drew ever nearer, the exhausted fundraisers pushed on. Right there, sore, but we're nearly there, mate, on the, on the final stretch. We'll get there. Hold on, there's no eye in the team, right? But there's an eye in the Let's win, let's do it. Yeah, we're all together as a group. Yeah. Go! <laughs> Crossing the finish line, the team raised an incredible 300,000 euros for Laurier Sport for Good. Good job, team! Yeah. Oh, completed it! What an epic adventure. Bigger picture is supporting and benefiting others. Great! So excited to be here and just feel like we've achieved something. That was amazing. We uh, achieved something fantastic and this is uh, all for uh, the kids we are supporting and uh, the high spirits uh, pushed us to our limits again.